Hello everyone and welcome to your horoscope for the week of March the 27th and April the 2nd, 2023. We have quite an intense sky at play, but this is nothing really new. We are just getting used to the intensity of this as larger, of course, astrological period, which kind of includes the spring, but to be totally honest, all of 2023, and to be even more honest, 2024 as well in its all, all of its integrity. So this is a period when, amongst everything else that might be happening in our personal lives, we're also observing, witnessing, living, going through a massive world change that has just entered its reality phase, where it's not just the thought of it, not just the feeling of it, not just the small elements coming together, but it is already in swing, so to speak. And of course, the energy is first to have it saying, the energy is first to be experienced, to be felt, to be perceived, perhaps. And when we do this, when we are already at that stage, when we do perceive the energy, we can be very sure that the physical expression the material manifestation, if you'd like, is going to be following very, very soon. Now, all of this week is under the imprint of Pluto, because it is this week when we could have experienced this week that passed, and also next week, Pluto moving into the sign of Aquarius. And this is a very new energy in so very many ways, one of it is because Aquarius is the representation of everything that is, you know, the next, the new, futuristic, revolutionary, never ever seen before. So in that sense, it is very, very much in theme and tune with the exper Aquarian expression. But the other side of this is that Pluto might have been throughout history, so very many times in the sign of Aquarius, yet this is the very, very first time when our species is actually aware of it, astrologically speaking, um, spiritually speaking, and of course even, or especially, astronomically speaking, because Pluto's symbolism, Pluto's alchemical imprint, so to speak, has been within our collective consciousness for many thousands of years, so to speak, because, you know, Pluto, the underworld, transformation, alchemy, death, change, the other side, that all of that is Plutonian and Scorpionic, yet Pluto has not really been observed, identified, we were not aware that a Pluto exists even in the heavens up there. So this is what makes this Pluto's transit in the Aquarius all that very special for the human collective. This truly is a new expression that was never ever lived consciously before. And this is so very clearly reflected in physical reality in our times, so to speak, because the internet, humani humanity never had a palpable, freely accessible, real, in that sense, a collective consciousness, collective database, the Akasha, if you will. The internet is actually its physical prototype. So Pluto is going to be working on the theme of the internet for the next 20 years, basically, and in so very many different ways. And when I say internet, well, Pluto will touch all of its sides. There is, of course, the Uranian side, the technicality of it, the larger consequence, the science of it, the knowledge of it, even future-wise, as in Pluto will bring out the shadow expression without a shadow of a doubt. So we will all see the illnesses, the addiction, 
And please understand this symbolically, what I'm going to say, and not literally, because I'm not speaking literally. But I, I think this is the best phrase to use, the soul-sucking, the soul-consuming side of the internet. Now, why am I saying this? I'm not suggesting that there is a, I don't know, shadowy higher power at work here, even though it could be, I don't know, I don't, do not maybe care, so to speak, because to be online, to be present, to have our consciousness shining, existing on the internet and social media, which is the gateway of the ego to the internet, basically, that is a prime expression of this. And that takes energy, that takes thought, that takes feeling, that takes creativity, that takes imagination. And one might be saying, okay, but the filters and the fake and the wannabe and the trends, and isn't this everything that is dangerous about it? Who am I, who are we, to actually um, have a saying before Pluto dishes up the truth of it? We don't know, that's only a speculation. But the energy input into the creation of the illusion, of the creation of the alter persona, the sustenance of it, because let us not make any mistakes. Um, your identity, your place, your, a piece of your consciousness existing, shining, burning, permanently there in the, in the internet, so to speak, collective consciousness. Well, that takes energy. That takes high levels of energy. Uh, or better to express energy that um, vibrates on a very high octave. So creativity, the energy of creativity, yet this is where the physical element of the creativity is even pseudo-physical, if, if you will, because it is real, that makes it physical, but it's air, it's the internet, I mean, it's waves, it, what is it? It's information just. So why am I saying all of this? Because basically this is the first full week when we have all of this to think about, all of this to consider, all of this to use as source of power, Pluto, but also as building material, again, in a sense, Pluto, for the future, where is our power within the collective consciousness? But the internet, as I said, is just one tiny expression of Aquarius. There is all the rest. Basically, the interwovenness, we I don't know, sorry about this, of society. Everyone is really dependent on everyone. And the truth of it is, Jupiter, you know, just a few years ago transited the sign of Aquarius. It whisked through it. Jupiter did highlight a lot of truths there. Because Jupiter is the planet of truth. And one of this truth is that we cannot really exist without the other. And this is where... It highlights the non-optional, the Saturnian element of this intersocial connections, Aquarius, because the ancient ruling planet of Aquarius is Saturn. So it doesn't matter what the individual Pluto in Aquarius fantasizes about, but all of us are interconnected, and even from a very down-to-earth social way, we do need one another. We truly do need one another. If nothing else, then the acceptance of one another, basically. To a person to leave the other person alone, if nothing else can. That is also Aquarius, basically. Because Aquarius is one of the most moral, one of the most um, embodying their principles, air signs. Libra, for example, can stay so much in just philosophy. 
Gemini can stay so much just in word or thought. Aquarius, however, again, I must say, the ancient ruling planet is like Saturn. And, you know, modern astrology but so much emphasis on Uranus, and it does make sense because that is the future even of astrology. The ruling planet of astrology is Uranus. Yet, Saturn do did not or does not co-rule Aquarius for no reason or just for the ancient methodology reasons why it became the ruler of Aquarius. Aquarius, the heir of Aquarius, well, it is one of the energies which has to be the most diligent, the most responsible, and the most, as I said, sharing and embodying of this. So that is why also the sign of Aquarius is related to the... It, the most iconic of them is the French Revolution, of course, in 70-something. I'm not very good at that part of history. But then again, so many other revolutions, uprisings, fights. But when I say fight, it doesn't necessarily have to be the physical Martian fight. It can just be ideological fight. Mind over matter, mind over everything. I think, therefore, I am. That is one of the key phrases of Uranus and Aquarius, on the other hand. So it can be just a overpowering a certain reality with our collective thoughts, desires, wishes, hopes, and dreams, Aquarius again. And in the tarot, Aquarius is the star card. So it is always meant to bring fresh hope and to rebuild and to show the ration, the logic of even ruins, because the star comes after the tower, the ruins, you know? The star shines a light on the ruins, and then the ruins are sanctified, they, they become something, much more than just ruins. <clears throat> so, where I want to go with this is that we are all going to be feeling this. What Aquarius is, what Aquarius means, and what the major truth says in that sign, but in the myriad of ways as it manifests in our lives, in our reality, in the world out there, Again, for example, physically, ideologically, socially, and we must not forget that Aquarius is all that equally as much about the individual as well. So society cannot be true, cannot reflect something true, the star in tarot, to the heavens above, unless the, com the basic component of it, the individual, is not truthful. So this is quite an a dichotomous energy with Pluto in it, because on one hand, it requires from us, it demands from us, and maybe now, just in energy, as I said, in, in higher thought, to truly be honest with ourselves as who we are as an individual and who it is that we can grow into into the future. Again, Aquarius. The ancient ruling planet of Aquarius is in Pisces. So we know the past. We have integrated the past. Saturn in that sign actually makes sure that everything that we could not integrate, we do integrate on its transit because it's the planet of manifestation. It is a structure. However, in Pisces, it is not its most rigid form. In Pisces, it has to be mutable, just like Pisces, even though Saturn does not all that much like that. And hence, this is why Saturn, many times in Pisces, takes on a very timeless form. Something can pop up from even the most distant past, something that is ultimately will be part of the future Aquarian energy. And this is the, uh, the expression of Saturn that we might see right now, when I say the distant past, well, collectively speaking, for humanity, that can be anything that pops up from the distant. Karmic energy, archaeological discovery, whatever. It, it can be anything. It's ancient structure on Earth. Why? 
Saturn in Pisces, and Saturn, the structure in Pisces, the ancient, the water, for example, this can promote big underwater discoveries on the bottom of the ocean, on the bottom of the sea. But then again, it can also be not sea in the sense that maybe there was a sea there 5,000 years ago, and now it's land, but that is also valid. There are things deep there, hidden there, buried there, and quite possibly something that resisted in time Saturn. And Saturn, usually in this period, at, at the very degrees, first degrees of Pisces, holds a conjunction with Fomalhaut, the star of ancient wisdom, of secrets, of alchemy, of the mystery unveiled, so to speak. So this is going to be a very, very intense time for archaeological discoveries as well. And again, Pluto brings the element that whatever that Saturn will unearth, so to speak, it will show itself, it will be part of the future, an important part of the future as a heritage, as something important. Or maybe this is also the period, again, let's not forget, humanity never ever consciously felt Pluto before. So this is where maybe history has to rectify itself, how it is recorded, because you can imagine how many errors there are in history and lies and deception and a lot of... And Pluto, slowly but surely, will reveal all of that. Pluto in Aquarius says, don't believe anything that you haven't lived. For you, that should be zero. That should be fantasy. That should be no more importance than a fairy tale. Saturn in the sign of Pisces in a way supports that. History to an individual is what's true to you and not. Because Saturn is dissolved in Pisces. Saturn cannot bring the history books now. Saturn cannot bring the professionals. Because that is in, in uh, Capricorn and also Aquarius. In Pisces, the professionals are a no-go. In, in Pisces, Saturn has to bring the deeply felt emotion. Just how basically history was recorded in ancient times. Channeled, in a channeled way. How did ancient Sumerians figure out that there are planets out there, planets which were not visible in the sky. Well, they could not calculate the gravity, could they? No problem, they could channel. They could channel, why? Because everything in the universe, in this, on this side where we are, is information. Matter is just condensed information. How easy it is to channel when the rational mind is not blocking you. The rational mind actually supports you to channel it, and it will take it as true. Saturn in the sign of Pisces supports that more than empirical evidence and stuff like that. Yet Pluto in the sign of Aquarius supports fully what is lived and experienced right now. Because why, Aquarius? You can deduce both the past and the future from the present lived experience. So, you know, this is... And why am I starting a weekly horoscope with all this philosophy? Because Pluto breaks down our boundaries. Pluto in the sign of Aquarius does not permit us to take every empirical data that we possess as granted, but rather the opposite. To, def to say, uh, uh, I don't buy this. It has to be something else. And then Pluto brings the something else, the alternative the deeper truth, the deeper where it is that we have to look for. And why? Because it activates that zero degrees, I have to say, this is so important, of Aquarius, where in December 2020, the meeting of Jupiter and Saturn took place, the great conjunction, the great opening of our collective eye, basically, the, the worldview that will set us free, the worldview that will basically be the foundation of our collective future, the Aquarian future, as I said, equality, 
fraternity, uh, equity, freedom for everyone. Everyone is equal in the eyes of... If it would be Libra, I would say the law, but in Aquarius, even the cosmic law. In the cosmos, basically. So, this is so very important. All of this, why? Because it will reflect, start slowly and surely reflecting in on the world stage as ideological movements, as thought, as whatever. And on the other hand, it will also start reflecting within our higher mind, because that is what Aquarius is, the quantum mind. So ideas, downloads, a lot of things that will just surprise us. We won't... Basically, long story short, in a nutshell, our reaction to it will be, I never thought I would be thinking this, having such initiatives, ideas, future plans. So it, we will surprise ourselves. So after this philosophy is complete, let's get to the tricky part. Because as soon as Pluto moved into the sign of Aquarius, well, it is squaring the nodes of the moon, Taurus and Scorpio axis. So, that's quite an intense square, because, as I said, the nodes of the moon are making sure that we are moving in forward in our collective future, where the south node to release that which we need to release for the forward movement. Yet, in Taurus, whatever we are moving towards is a permanent part of, the, of our value system, Amongst whatever else we're doing, Taurus, nature, physically, money, material, fashion, everything, feeling, five senses, what the earthly side, but the more divine side is our deepest, deepest, deepest values. Basically, that will be part, th those values that are almost genetically written within us, as in, even, an example, even tribes people who never saw civilization ever have very certain values eternally or, I don't even know what word to use, common with every other human being, regardless of where, which timeline, how. And this is Taurus, the highest expression of Taurus. So this is so important. And Pluto is squaring these. So Pluto brings the awareness. Why the awareness? Because that's Aquarius. The awareness changes everything. So Pluto brings the awareness of which values we need to, Pluto again, transform radically to make them, and this is North Node in Taurus, simple and to serve us for the long term. The big long term, when I say this, because we're speaking about our futures here. So, yeah. And we must not forget that very soon in May, Jupiter will also enter Taurus. Jupiter will conjunct the North Node. Uh, but I, I think it will be at the very big, at the very beginning degrees of the sign of Taurus. So that is even more important because Jupiter will expand this energy. Whatever is being set up right now, Jupiter will very soon expand it. And around the 20th of April, we also have an eclipse, North Node eclipse, of course, where Jupiter will also expand that. And it will take place around at 29 degree heavily anoretic Aries Taurus cusp basically so it's a very powerful it's a super concentrated and and shadow bursting so to speak eclipse it is really it is going to be especially if you have any planets or important points, degrees there, you're going to be feeling it very, very, very intensely. So Pluto squaring this energy is, is, is kind of heavy for all of us. Because 
we need to make sure that this Taurus expression and whatever we individually are doing for this North Node and Taurus transit, because this affects all of us in, in one area of our lives, and Pluto squaring it makes almost forces us to be as real and aware as possible. So right now, everything that is fake value, everything that m truly does not serve us any longer for any reason, Pluto will just put salt in our wounds, almost forcing us, determining us not to take it into the future with us, to eliminate it, to discard it. Pluto is basically reducing that North Node down to its basic elements. It's cleaning it, but almost like an acid bath. You know, you have a gold coin, but it's covered in grime and calcified whatever. Yes, Pluto is the acid bath. You need to put it in and the acid will dissolve everything, leaving not, nothing but the gold. So, you know, this element to it might have a lot of emotional discomfort, mental discomfort, us having to make very difficult choices, moves, but difficult as in we need to ex we need to express our power, we need to express our strength, the Plutonian strength. That means saying hard things, cutting out certain things from our lives, things that might have brought us so much pleasure, but it's bye-bye, we are a different person. So certain things in life might no longer bring us pleasure. The North Node squaring Pluto might manifest in many people's individual stories like this. The food, the activity, the music, the... I want to say drug, but why not? <laughs> Even drug. Alcohol, for example. Or anything Torian that always, like always, used to be a source of pleasure, comfort, blah, blah, blah Torian expression for you. Now, strangely, it doesn't do anything. And it's not a phase. It's permanent. This means you also have to kind of reinvent yourself. Your modus operandi and your, your Torian stuff. Because if that doesn't... Who are you? And answering who you are maybe begins with what brings you pleasure? What brings you joy? What do you love? And the answer to this right now, right now, is I don't know. Because I never thought this, never imagined. I never thought that this... I would feel like this. Where it is exactly my pleasures that are shedding off like that skin. That means you need to explore. Maybe this is the discomfort that you were not expecting, the necessity to explore, especially if you're in your 40s, 50s, 60s. Do you really want to explore? Yeah, the answer to Pluto gives no choice. Explore yourself, explore what you love, explore the inner world, explore the outer world, explore Taurus, your senses, nature, sensuality, taste, whatever it is. Yet, in order to find out who you are in this new age that is actually here, it's not knocking on the door, it's stepped in and it already sat down on the sofa. You know, if you want to explore who you are, there is no choice. If you want to, sorry, if you want to find out who you are, there is no choice but to explore, but to start rediscovering yourself. Isn't that what we have done in the past four or five years with the nodal activity in Gemini, with the eclipses in Gemini, with Uranus squaring to, uh, Saturn in 2022, 2021? Yes, but that was more like the design of you. This is more like the lived version of you. And pleasure, Ven everything Venusian, is Uranian, actually, because Venus was born from Uranus's 
let's say not. <laughs> so, she is very much like her, I want to say father, but who is her father, really? Saturn or Uranus or the sea Neptune or... It doesn't matter who her primordial, but she is so very Uranian. She might be the total contrast to Uranus. She is all about feeling and Uranus is all about the rationality of it. Yet the freedom makes them so similar. Love, sensuality, feeling, emotion, deeper emotion, even the div most divine emotion does not listen to anyone or anything. It's free. It, it respects no logic. It respects no boundaries. So is this not very much like Uranus himself? And if Venus is the ruling planet of Taurus, as fixed, as rigid, as immovable Taurus is, it still has its freedom Nature, Taurus, you cannot tell nature what to do. She follows her own course regardless. And perhaps, again, Pluto squaring the North Node, this is when our species will find out that, that you cannot dominate nature, not even with technology, not even with knowledge, not even with anything, because nature has a special gift. One day she is like what we think she is, the other day she can change into total mystery, nullifying all our research and, research and knowledge. Like, what I'm saying is, if nature wants it that way, the Newtonian laws can very much be different from one day to the other. And the quantum reality, quantum physics, supports this all that much. The physics of consciousness that Pluto is going to be teaching us very soon also supports this. So... It's, maybe it's not just us who will find ourselves surprisingly different. Maybe all of nature very soon will find herself surprisingly different. So this will bring on so many challenges collectively, but every challenge will have to be... How should I say? Started to be resolved by us answering who we are based on what we love. So Uranus weaves together into... Venus, and at the end of the week, they do dance with one another. They do meet in the sky in a dance. So they do kind of melt into one another. They become each other's expression. So love will be free. Nature will be free. Of course, this Plutonian activity, the square, will also highlight the... And I'm searching for words here, the worthlessness of our worth. Because the financial crisis, the banking crisis, the insurance world crisis, everything that has to do with insurance, insurance companies, all of that is in a big, big, big crisis. So we will find that this material Transformation, this material collapse, this apparent material scarcity is actually an expression of something that is brewing deep within us. Everything that we not so long ago thought that was very valuable and worthy. For example, movies, fiction, Hollywood, actors, valuable people. VIPs, royalty, stars, we want to be like them. Everyone that basically acted. That found itself losing a lot of value. This is even where singers, actors, the media, everything that is glitter and shiny and scorpionically talented, super refined, superpower for a titan of their industry falls. It has zero value. And the simple, the not so talented, but Uranian, the willful, the brave, those who have the voice to speak the truth, the harsher, the rebels, 
those are finding their uprising. And this week, this highlights this economically and value-wise. So again, I must highlight, we are feeling the worthlessness of our worth. This is where a shift of polarities. This is where the worth, what, what was all that worthless in the 2000s, why the Great Conjunction in Taurus? That closed the earth great, earthly Great Conjunction. Everything that kind of became worthless then, the simple, the rudimentary, rural. I can say so many expressions of this. Is reversing it and rising up to be the greatest of value. Like, for example, professional categories. Cleaners. The human touch element, the cleaners who put their fingers, the, the rag, the cleaning material or whatever, on the surface or on a person's body, the cleaners, well, they are basically rising up as value. South node in Scorpio. And maybe we don't see this quite yet materially as in cleaners get bigger wage. No, not like that. Cleaners are rewarded by the divine, Saturn in the sign of Pisces. And you can imagine that this will reflect socially. Maybe the next person who is going to be the idol was a cleaner or is a cleaner and is something else too. But the, you know what I mean? But you can imagine that the cleaning is also healthcare professionals and people who clean the minds of the collective, of the individual, and the alternative of that. So what are we falling in love with? This is the big question collectively. Who are we falling in love with? Again, collectively. But individually, I can also give you... Collectively, I can. But individually, I can. If it's falling in love, because Venus conjunct Uranus in her home sign of Taurus. As long as Uranus has its stay in Taurus till 2026... Venus, is, con Venus con is in her home sign of Taurus every year or so. So this is something that ticks periodically. And every time this conjunction ticks, there is a big chance of falling in love with someone Uranian, someone who will rock your world, someone who is that very much different, but also a breath of fresh air, air Uranus wind, the, the wind of change. And it's going to cause a big earthquake landslide in your life, but all for the better. Now, why is this meeting this week, the meeting of uh, Venus, Uranus, so very romantically, you know, rebellious? Because there's Juno there as well. Juno is the asteroid of partnerships. And it kind of Juno determines the usefulness of the partnerships especially in the sign of Taurus so the usefulness factor appeared already Juno so that means how will this Venus conjunct Uranus rock our world value wise money wise finance money wise of course it can be a massive loss losing everything but Juno brings already the substitute so if this is a loss it's one one day or two my wishful thinking, of course, but Pluto, let's not forget Pluto is, you know, triggering the nodes. So, yeah, this can be very sudden, very quick, very spontaneous. But both the bad and the good will happen so quickly that in a flash of a moment, you're already in the new. And I have to also say this. The North Node in Taurus, again, I must highlight the physical nature of Taurus. And Pluto, well, it's the wrecking ball. It doesn't usually behave in a very radical way when at the beginning of a sign, but the square to the nodes makes it a tiny bit radical. So we might be seeing Earth events, but Aquarius means technology, so a misfire of technology. Solar flares cause the disruption in the internet, which causes some kind of chaos, havoc. Why solar flares the sun in Aries? 
enough about Taurus, enough about money, enough about even love in that sense, because there is another energy in the sky which is equally as important. If the sign of Taurus hosts North Node, Juno, uh, Uranus, Venus, and Sedna, but that doesn't matter right now as much, the sign of Aries, well, it hosts Sun, Chiron, Jupiter, uh, Vesta, Eris, Mercury, and if we want to include Salasha, even her. That's a huge energy there. Mercury is going to conjunct at the beginning of the week, Sun, Chiron, Jupiter. But this is where Mercury is already exiting, uh, becoming distant from this triple conjunction. Um, Vesta does the same way as Mercury. It is leaving this conjunction. Yet, these planets, especially, you know, over the course of the week, are linking one another up in chains. Like, for example, Eris is not conjunct the Sun, absolutely, but Eris is conjunct Vesta, Vesta's conjunct Jupiter, Jupiter's conjunct Chiron, Chiron's conjunct the Sun. So, you know what I mean? The, all of the Aries right now is washing into one, heavily being activated, and I mean very, very heavily. So whatever this Pluto might grind for us right now, we must not forget the energy in Aries. Courage, determination, over wounds. Some, you know, there is a saying in my culture, when the knife already hits the bone, when time is up. And this Chiron, Jupiter and... Uh, let me just look at my screen. Jupiter and the Sun, of course. The Sun being uh, exalted in the sign of Aries, combust, conjunct Jupiter and Chiron. Well, that really, really amplifies the wound. So time truly is up. I need to act now. I need to take action now. All of these things are very, very, very important. And we might be feeling this deep inner impulse to take action, to make the move. And if it's not possible right now, the preparation for it and even the deep frustration that comes with it, with it is not really defeating right now because we know why we're frustrated because we need to take action and we're just waiting for the right opportunity. And speaking about courage, the sun holds a trine at the beginning of the week with Black Moon Lilith and Leo, the sun's home sign, Leo. So... This is a big, big, big burst of courage. Lilith brings on the primordial heart, so to speak. The instinct, the roughness, the self-centeredness, the brutality sometimes of what courage means. And also the desire to make it. But at the same time, the higher expression of this is the hero. But so a hero is born. Or this is what it takes for a hero to triumph. This is what it takes for things to come together. Then another subtle energy in the sky is um, Pallas Athena in the sign of Cancer squaring, we, squaring basically the sun, Jupiter and Chiron in the sign of Aries in you know different degrees, but it, it does square that it does square everything. So, Pallas Athena is, you know, the tactics. How to get our way tactically, or by force, but still we need the methodology. And Aries is the head. In Cancer, uh, Pallas Athena is the family. Everything that makes us safe, our feelings, our belonging, uh, our sense of belonging, our ethnic, cultural, genetic, skin tone, distinctiveness, you know where we belong in the category. So there might be a fight here to go against our nature sometimes at Pallas Athena. If it has to be, it has to be. And uh, another energy that I would like to mention is that Eris is conjunct Vesta. So sometimes Vesta is the sacred flame, a fiery asteroid in a fiery sign. So this is fiery. 
but sometimes Eris is the rebellion. Eris is the extreme gesture. Sometimes an extreme gesture promoted by, as I said, the initiative, the courage, the the, the heroism of Ares is actually what brings us to safety. So this is a gesture, a step, a move to safety, for the safety. You know, Vesta is the guardian, the guardian fire, which shows the path and which basically gives the warmth to exist. And conjunct Eris, we might be seeing big, big, big moves out there in the lives of others, on the world stage, why not? The world stage is highlighted because there was a new moon there not so long ago. And the other energy that I would like to speak about is Mars at the beginning degrees of Cancer. That's also the world stage and that's kind of out of bounds. So this is an extreme Mars who kind of protects borders, protects the others, protects family protects the home, protects country, protect, you know, it's a very, very, very protective Mars. And this Mars holds an absolutely beautiful trine with Saturn in the sign of Pisces. And then this Mars also holds a trine with the south node in the sign of Scorpio, or I can also say Humea, planetary Humea in the sign of Scorpio. A beautiful water trine. So this is where emotion, faith, all of our sacrifice, all of our self-discipline, all the love that we have, all the wisdom that we have, all the sacrifice of our ancestors, Saturn and Pisces, comes to us at this moment as help, as empowerment, as a gateway to miracles. This is where emotion and the divine emotion within us, where we want something, or we love something, or we wish good, or whatever, so very intensely, that reality, this time, bows before us. And why do I say this? There was 2018, there was 2019, when reality, we had to bow before reality, Saturn in its home sign of Capricorn, there was no alchemy in the classic sense where, and there it is, poop, there is the manifestation, the day was saved. It was anti that. So no, all of us had to bow before reality and do it the hard way. In the sign of Pisces is the other expression where reality has to bow to our deepest faith. Reality has to bow before its creator. And its creator indirectly is us, the individual. And this trine does promote this. Now let's not forget that Pluto squares Humea as well, planetary Humea. And she is one of the most extraordinary trans-Neptunian objects out there. Much more than extraordinary than any other because she has an X shape. Because she revolves around her orbit so very, very quickly, that immediately says quantum and quantic and whatever. And when Pluto, the planet of fated power, squares, squares that, well, on a, the positive note, things can be turned out miraculously good in a flash of an eye, as long as the thought of it is within you. The not-so-favorable expression, well, Humea in Scorpio is, you know, radioactivity, what is within the atom, the Large Hadron Collider, and Pluto might be accident, Pluto might be, well, things, what, what is the downside of certain sciences? So we might be seeing this play out on the world stage. And also Mercury squares Pallas Athena. Mercury still in the sign of Aries at the beginning of the week. And at the end of the week, it is going to be an anoretic Aries. So it will be an Aries. Uh, but when it squares Pallas Athena, a sudden change of tactics, sudden change of 
of direction, reconfiguring our GPS quickly, suddenly, unexpectedly. It is uncomfortable, but it might be for the best possible reasons. And we must never ever forget Mars trying Saturn. Mars in Cancer, debilitated, okay, but it is super protective in Cancer. It might be debilitated, but it doesn't need any radicalism. The shell of the Cancer, the Cancer doesn't need to fight. It just retracts into its shell and by passive aggressiveness, I'm ignoring you. And Saturn actually can offer the safety, the shell. The shell can come online and it can be titanium. You know that song, titanium? Yeah. Definitely. So we must all, all of us must recall under this energy that we are made of titanium at least in one area of our lives. And at the very end of the week, Mercury conjuncts Eris and Vesta. So at the beginning of the week, it hang out, it hanged out with Jupiter, Chiron, and the Sun. Now, at the end of the week, it left them, it left that party, and joined the girls, Eris and Vesta. So, that is rebellious news. That is something will hit, you know, the media. And it might be a little bit conflictual. Because let's not forget that this energy is starting to um, build up towards the eclipse. The... 20th of April eclipse, the North Node eclipse. So the North Node will be, if I'm not mistaken, at the very, very beginning degrees of Taurus. And the Sun and the Moon will be at 29 degrees and 58 minutes of Aries. So this is both of the signs. And this reminds me of the esoteric ruler of Taurus, Vulcanus. Vulcan. Volcano, anyway, volcano. Aries is the fire and the spark and the hot air. Taurus is the magma. And Taurus hosts Uranus. So that's, that's explosive. That's a detonation of something. What? I don't know. It can be... I mean, I'm pretty sure that it will have a physical component the earth, how will that will play out, I don't know. But there is also going to be a financial component. Eclipse. So something is bye-bye and the other is taking its place straight on, immediately. And at this week, at the end of this week, Mercury might give us a foreshadow of what that might be. And again, Vesta is the protective element here. Because what the purpose of this energy is to prepare us. So Vesta sometimes protects by preparation, by giving the information, the communication, the vision, whatever it needs to give in this sense. And we can also see that the sun in the sign of Aries, it is following the course of Jupiter. It is following the course of Mercury, and also Venus. So this is where whatever these planets have done in that part of our lives, until now, the sun is illuminating it. The sun is highlighting it. We're integrating it and we're having enough initiation, determination, courage, whatever you want, to very, very soon, if not immediately, take important action or to express whatever I said about the self-knowledge. We are also figuring out what it is that we love in this new paradigm, this new reality, this new phase. So as hard as this energy may be, because it is hard, we must look at its intent. It doesn't want to break us. It doesn't want to hurt us. It wants us to embrace our deepest authenticity, whatever that may be. Because if it's extreme, we might be afraid of it. We might be afraid feeling of our truth. But this energy gives us no choice. So, as hard as it might be, this is how we make it easy for ourselves. Embracing more and more of our truth 
and to the most authentic feelings and values within us and heading towards those whatever they might need you know because these might need many sacrifices from all of us pluto squaring the nodes but it is this week when we will get into the i do believe that you know the m mood of it this is when we are getting used that whatever life is setting up for us right now well this is what our next this remaining part of the year is going to be all about and also 2024 so again my advice is let us stay within our own truth because saturn trying mars gives us the protective bubble the shell as long as we hold the truth within ourselves as long as we believe our most authentic feelings and not what out there or what he she says we need to believe the divine within us this time and that might see us through any hardship that might be experiencing right now because it won't last for long because this energy is guiding us towards solutions that's why we might be seeing the hardship more right now so thank you for listening i'm so sorry for this very long horoscope and all the philosophy and alchemy that went with it but we need to understand that the divine does have it figured out we don't and for us it's hard and difficult and how will we find solutions to the problems we must trust because we will so thank you for listening thank you for all the love and support if you found this useful and if you'd like to support my work you can donate on the paypal link in the description below Thank you everyone for all the love and support. Until next time, bye for now.